Okay, let's do a part two deep dive into the CZ Scorpion. We're going to be going over subsonic ammo selections for suppressors, barrel lengths, purpose, one of the best red dot designs for field of view, magazines, and all the other standard upgrades. Oh, and I'm also playing around with this 3X magnifier married up to this 501C. This is part two, and after this video, if you want to go catch part one at the gun channel, feel free to do that. If you haven't seen that yet, it's not necessary to watch them in order. So let's let go of one gun does everything. If it starts to fall short in some areas, that means maybe another firearm is necessary, at least for me. I was once told to never use a graph or a chart. So here's a chart. This is everything that a gun needs to do, and we're not going to build that gun today or talk about it. I hired a uh, very expensive advertising agency to come up with this for me. So, so in short, I'm going to lay down some strong constraints and um, priorities for myself in, in this topic to make sure we don't get lost in the weeds. Some of these topics we could spend a three hour video on. Hopefully this video will be less than that. No promises, but I'll do a bunch of jump cuts because I ramble like this. For me, what I did was started from a realistic functional need of the gun and very purpose-driven reverse engineer. And if it became a challenge of physics that the firearm really couldn't do it as well as I wanted to, maybe leave room for another project for a second or third gun to satisfy those burdens that this gun couldn't carry. So priority number one is the light. Well, it was 350 lumens, so I didn't get a lot of backsplash the longest distance in my house. And uh, 350 lumens do, does just fine for that. Um, if you put a double A battery into this Protect light, it drops it down, I think, to 250 or 150. So if you're into even lower lumens, that's an option for you, as well as um, getting stuck without a battery, you would be able to find a double A, uh, probably easier than a C123. But you have both of those options, which is nice. And this particular light comes with a pad, or you can stick the, uh, keep the original switch on there and have the pressure pad where it's just like a, a button. That is the light, and that's one of the most uh, important things because my nightmare would be to shoot a loved one. I mean, I can't even talk about it. It would just be a, f a nightmare. I do a lot of my training is really specific on identifying the target, whether that's coming through a house and bouncing the light off the floor and things like that, just because to avoid that nightmare. So identifying a threat, a potential threat, or even more importantly, a non-threat. And of course, the next priority is making sure that I hit the target that I intend to. The Holosun 510C, one of the best red dots out there, I think, for this platform. I have it pushed kind of forward to give me a good peripheral vision as I look through it, both eyes open. And I have the um, circle, of the donut of death brightness. I make sure and I um, point this right at a white wall and adjust the red dot to still be visible. So that would be about as bright indoors as it's gonna have to deal with as far as illumination with the white light. And, uh, and I also find that works if I were to point a uh, step outside outdoors. It also is still visible in daylight for the most part. And so it's a nice all around setting for it. And that's a shake and wake. So when I pick it back up, it's the same brightness as it was when I last, last left it. So at night I could splash a wall. Yep, I could see that red dot just fine. Even if it is dark inside, the red dot's a little bit bright, but it's not a problem. So it's kind of in the middle. It'll work outside in a bright, uh, a white light situation or in a no light situation. It's a two MOA dot in the middle. So that's two inches of a red dot at hundred yards, if I'm not mistaken. And it's got 65 MOA on the outer circle on this particular um, 510C Holosun. I have this Holosun set up with the donut of death on it. It can do a two MOA on that, or you can do just the circle, or you can put them together. That is kind of cool when we start later on in the video, when we start getting into this magnifier, if we start getting into like a hundred yard range and we need to drift a little bit, or do some small elevation, I have a reference point of a true center. And then I think it's 32 MOA on the other side. Here, you want to identify the threat, 3X magnifier, pretty sick. No, it's not gonna be designed for headshots at 1,000 yards, or is it? Do the math real quick and see if we can get somebody at 1,000 yards. Go. I think if we launch this projectile at 45 degrees, 1,000 yards, okay. I think this pretty much proved that it can be done. 
That's what we like to call empirical evidence. You can officially use that firearm to shoot a nine millimeter 1,000 yards. You can drop it right on top of their head. Pretty cool little setup. You can not break your uh, grip too much. It doesn't flip over too easily. Sure you could do it, but not today. So works well for what I need it. And the next priority for me, which can almost be number one, it's not that they really, um, I guess the top 10 priorities are all just sort of one, but it's sound, sound, sound. S sound injury uh, or hearing injury isn't going to be just temporary. There are opportunities. If you shoot a firearm indoors, you could be permanently hearing damage or you could have permanent pain from vibrations from sound for the rest of your life. Um, and not to mention any little ones you might have running around depending on your situation. And I've gone through the process of um, ordering a suppressor and I picked one that had the lowest dB um, for a nine millimeter as well as the first round pop to the lowest one comparable. So um, I ended up with the Osprey 9 and I didn't go to the 45 because the Osprey 45 was more versatile perhaps, um, a little longer, but also the first round pop was like 10 decibels louder than um, almost 10 decibels louder than the Osprey 9. And then after that, they sort of almost evened out. Even the, the Osprey 45 might've been slightly quieter on average, but that first round pop, of course, is 10 decibels and it only takes three decibels. So every three decibels, sound doubles. So yeah, sound is really huge for me. I typically leave this thing hanging uh, on the, uh, the weapon system. Hopefully have the presence of mind and or the time. I'll slap these guys on first one button push on the side and they're fired up and ready to go. Something like these work good, turn them back off, or just like a, a simple pair of analog ones with just a rocker switch on it. Sound is a huge deal for me and that of course brings us right into the topic that's never gonna go away and that is the bullet or the round or the caliber. For the cartridge, uh, it needs to stay, stay subsonic. It actually stays suppressed and it's 25 yards or less is its primary function. So I was tossing between, it's kind of torn between 300 blackout subsonic and nine millimeter subsonic. And as far as a self-defense round, um, I don't know how to say this, seismic, S-E-I-S-M-I-C, has 185 grain, nine millimeter. And it's been out for a year or two at least because I've seen a couple of reputable cats on YouTube testing them and talking about them and trying them out on different firearms. So 185 grains out of an eight inch barrel at 1,050 feet per second, and I saw that chronoed, uh, is definitely no slouch. Would I rather punch somebody with 300 blackout? Yes, but that brings me into the other priorities. Not only for myself to use this weapon, but other members of the family can use this weapon. So now nine millimeters sort of helps lean towards that a little bit. It's not a deal breaker between say a 300 blackout or 45 cal or 10 millimeter little PCC, but um, but yeah, so nine millimeter moves over to that for me and my particular family nucleus. Where the nine millimeter really kind of super takes off is in, um, it allows me to affordably go into a really, really high round count and shoot still on my 25 yard range that I have access to. So the amount of rounds of nine millimeter that I could affordably do realistically every year is probably around 7,000 rounds. And that would probably be about 24 hours of actual time on the range shooting, um, outdoor shooting, and I guess occasional indoor, whenever I couldn't make it out there. And so at around 7,000 rounds, if I'm not mistaken, that probably gets me around $1,500 a year in nine millimeter. And I think probably triple that for, um, for 300 blackout. I'm not really confident with the 300 blackout, so forgive me if I'm wrong on that, but speaking of amazing fucking charts, check that sweetheart out. I was like, eh, is 300 blackout really gonna be that different? But over a three year course, uh, even if I, uh, with nine millimeter, I could end up with um, maybe between 50 and 100 hours of actual shooting and uh, 15,000 rounds of nine millimeter, which is feasible for me. So yeah, there's that. Priority number six is high round count um, without having to do a magazine switch. It's um, 35 rounds in this particular magazine. So myself or somebody else in my home could, um, could go ahead and um, take advantage of that. And very unlikely they would need to do a mag switch. And if they did, it's not too bad, obviously, on this weapon. Um, or it could even go as far as uh, mounting a second magazine right onto this one and just double it up and just sort of move it over, right? So that would get us up to what, 70 rounds? 
feel like the math is killing it today. Magazines are pretty awesome if you haven't seen the CZ Scorpion magazines with the steel feed ramp, not feed ramp, but the still reinforced lips is a good way to go. Apparently the other ones that don't have the steel in there can crack over time if you leave them, leave them loaded um, or out in the sun, I'm sure. And they sort of uh, load like an AR mag, for example, you just push in right on the top. <laughs> yeah, push in right on the top. And uh, they come in all variety of sizes. These are whoa, these are 35 round here. So that's that. Magazines are good. And priority number seven is reliability. So there's a lot of guns out there with really, really great reliability. This is a blowback system. So super simple, very effective, and it works really, really well with a suppressor and it makes sure there's no gases coming in my face, like an AR build from a 300 blackout, for example. So compact package, so fitting in drawers, traveling in backpacks to vehicles, um, using in tight situations and even maybe saving a little bit of money on a smaller safe at home having it be able to break down to a smaller package Pri priority number nine was like parts and customization the cz scorpion even though probably most people that have it live in a trailer park uh, i live in a duplex so it's probably pretty close i can like an ar-15 and a glock probably the the kings of most customizable most access to aftermarket parts but as far as a uh, like a pistol caliber carbine man the cz scorpion has tons of options tons on that note i know there's other weapon systems out there that could fill these needs um besides the cz scorpion yeah between the blowback system and and just all the things we talked about it this one works too what was number 10. priority number 10 i don't know be a nice person read law books let's see getting the current Florida Firearms um, edition of this. This is a seventh. I'm imagining they're probably around the ninth edition at this point. It's actually a pretty cool read, so go check that out for sure, especially if you're gonna conceal carry. Now that's a Florida book. I'm assuming they have one, some in other states, so hopefully they do. Long hours, long high round count at the range, a truck gun, very um, mobile, compact, fits in a backpack, I can travel with it and uh, doesn't take up too much space at home, whether I sneak it into a drawer, to a corner, or into even a smaller safe than I might need for a longer barrel. Classes, courses, CQB training, and also teaching my kids how to shoot. It's really, really good for that. So what this gun's not good as, is obviously not good for concealed carry. Having a subcompact gun for concealed carry and a nice holster, so moving on to an additional gun to fulfill the needs that this one can't. It's not good at not scaring the shit out of your liberal friends. It, you know, if somebody saw this, you know, you gun people, you see this, you're like, yeah, whatever, that's cool, I want one of those. But if a friend comes over and says, hey, I got this little pistol here, you wanna check it out? And I bring this out, they're like, what in the f do you need that for? So it's not, it's not good for keeping people calm. So if you pull some kind of monster like this out, Again, relatively speaking, I think that uh, it's not really good for look and chill. So that starts to look scary, much like an AR-15 or an even worse, an AK, right? What, that, what the CZ Scorpion's not super awesome at is sort of the chill situations, like chill factor. When there's a, a knock late at night at the door and you're pretty sure it's no big deal, it's, it's a little bit more awkward to sort of carry a, a rifle through the house and to where maybe a handgun would be a little more discreet. The rest of the stuff is, is all pretty normal, what you guys see out there. HBI um, tactical brace, you guys have seen that before. Um, you've got the uh, three and a half pound trigger pull here with a flat face trigger. Uh, in the B-roll, you probably saw a different safety. Um, as I was training and putting a lot of rounds in this, knowing that someday I might want to move up to an AR-15 platform, I kind of put something in that worked a little bit more like that so we'll see how these work and i'll do a separate video on those particular guys get a closer look at it for the shows of fat fat and thick but they don't get in the way and start digging into the hand and the other side so kind of like a 45 cant ar-15 style sort of ish we already talked about the lights um, that uh, regular better angled grip there's so many companies out to do it this larger paddle here that works out just fine and the charging handle is a little bit large from HBI. I think most of the stuff on here is HBI for the most part. So, and oh, and I have the suppressor coming in. We are unloaded. Sort of a, I don't know what this is. It's a piece of metal. I don't think it's a flash hide or anything. Thread protector, because underneath here we have half by 28. So, but that's nice that the barrel is all ready to go for a half by 28. 
and just so happens that's obviously the the commonality for a half by 28 for a regular pistol and so they're pretty ubiquitous to be able to find these different barrels so I can move that suppressor easily from one firearm to the other, hopefully save money. Okay, this video seems like a clusterfuck. Hopefully in the editing room, I'll be able to make some sort of sense out of it. My name is Mike, you're at the gun channel. Thanks so much for hanging out. Go ahead and check out part one of CZ Scorpion if, it, if you haven't seen that yet. And next on the bank is we have the Legion X5 SIG P320 and it has Romeo 1 Pro. Gosh, why can't I remember the name of that red dot? It's got the newer red dot on it. So we're going to be doing that next and so come uh, so come back and check that out if that's something you're into and thanks again for coming by that's all i got